Hey friends, I hope your week is off to a great start. Today we are trying out another recipe from Claire Saffitz's cookbook Dessert Person. This time we are headed to the savory chapter for these miso buttermilk biscuits. So I am a big fan of a nice flaky salty biscuit and I've made biscuits from Claire a few times in the past. First with her buttermilk biscuit that was part of BA's Best series, then again with her cream biscuits which were a topping on her cherry biscuit cobbler. I even tried some biscuits from Molly Baz which were her sour cream and onion biscuits that were part of the basically Better Baking series. So I'm very comfortable with the biscuit making process to get those nice crispy layers throughout. But what I'm most excited about with this recipe is the inclusion of miso. So miso is one of those great savory flavors that brings a lot of umami. Um, however, it does have applications in sweet recipes as well. I, I tried out Chris Morocco's miso almond butter cookies which were fantastic. So if you're buying miso to make these biscuits while you've got some extra on hand you might as well make Chris Morocco's cookies as well because those were delicious. But without any further ado let's get right into these biscuits. So the first thing we're going to do is thin out this miso with some buttermilk. And since we've got a pretty significant texture difference between the really thick miso and the really thin buttermilk what we're going to do is slowly incorporate that buttermilk into the miso a couple tablespoons at a time stirring and mashing it around until until it's a homogenous mixture. Then we're going to add in a little bit more and continue that process until we've used up half the buttermilk and really thinned down that miso. So by doing this slowly we can ensure that everything is homogenous all along the way um, and then by the time we're halfway through the buttermilk we'll be to a place where we're kind of got two things that are closer in texture to each other and they'll just blend in a little bit easier. So after a few additions of this buttermilk we've got this mixture to a really loose kind of runny place. You can see that this is I mean it's obviously thicker than milk uh, but it's loosened up considerably versus where we were with that really thick paste. So now we can switch to a whisk and just whisk this all together to get it evenly incorporated. Cool so that does it for the wet ingredients so let's move on to the dry. All right, so in a large mixing bowl, I've got some AP flour. To that, I'm going to add granulated sugar, baking powder, and baking soda. And then we'll just whisk this thoroughly to get it evenly incorporated. So one of my top takeaways from the Basically Better Baking series was that your dry ingredients really take a lot longer to get evenly incorporated than you might think they do. So um, whisk for what seems like an excessive amount of time, and that'll get everything evenly distributed. All right, so with the dry ingredients evenly incorporated, we can add in the butter. So uh, here I've got two sticks of butter that I've cut up into small cubes. These are probably about maybe a quarter inch by quarter inch slice, uh, somewhere between quarter inch and a half inch. So I'm going to drop these all in here, and then we're just going to toss these in flour to get them evenly coated. This will keep them from sticking to each other, and then we can start smashing them into the flour into flat little pieces. So you can just grab those butter chunks, smush them between your fingers into flat little sheets. That's what we're looking for. And when you're smashing the butter, you do want to use your fingertips. Your fingertips should be cooler than the palms of your hand. If you're smushing this in the palms of your hand, you're probably going to have more of a melting situation. If you had a food processor, you could use a food processor here to cut this butter through. If you have a pastry cutter, you could use that as well. And you don't have to get everything smashed, you know, super pulverized. Um, the goal really is to have no chunks of butter that are larger than the size of a pea. So if you're curious to see what it looks like making biscuits with a pastry cutter, check out my buttermilk biscuit video. I used a pastry cutter in that one so you can get a feel for what the technique looks like. All right, so we are in good shape here. You can see that the texture has really improved. There are really no big lumps to speak of here. All these pieces of butter have been broken down no bigger than this, which I would say uh, size of a pea. I'd say that's about in the ballpark. Uh, so we're in good shape. So we can move on to the next step. Now that we've got the butter incorporated in here, we're going to add the wet into the dry. So I'm breaking out my stabilizer just to keep the bowl in place since we're going to be mixing and pouring at the same time. If you don't have a stabilizer, just a damp kitchen towel wrapped in a circle should get the job done. Using a fork and stirring continuously, I'm going to just slowly stream in the wet ingredients. And I like to kind of pour the wet ingredients traveling around the bowl just because you do want to get everything kind of evenly damp so that you're not getting something oversaturated. So if you start off more even, it's easier to keep it even at the end. So we don't want to have dry bits of dough and wet soggy bits of dough. We want everything to be about the same texture. Uh, that'll set you up for a better result. So the wet and dry ingredients are totally combined. Now we're going to just do a couple turns with a spatula or a bench scraper just to ensure that everything is kind of evenly incorporated and homogenous. So I'm just going under the bottom and folding over onto the top. I do see some dry bits of flour down there. So wanting to just fold this over onto itself. Cool. So I folded about probably five or six times um, and now we're looking like we're in really good shape. So taking a little bit of extra AP flour, 
sprinkling this down on our work surface here. Obviously you want to have a clean work surface. We're going to turn this dough out and we want to push this into a rectangle just using our hands. For this initial pass we are looking to get this to a half inch thick uh, square or rectangle, your choice. Uh, we're going to be cutting this into four pieces so whatever shape you want is fine and you don't need to be super precise and perfect here. So now using a sharp knife or your bench scraper you just want to cut this into four equal quadrants and then we're going to stack these on top of each other. And this stacking of the dough is what's going to give us those flaky layers um, because now we've got all of these uh, striations of butter stacked on top of each other. We'll get a little more flour down on the work surface. From here we need to roll this out to an eight and a half inch by eight and a half inch square. So I'm going to do a couple passes and rotate, couple passes and rotate. As you're rolling out these biscuits, you don't wanna to push too hard. Pushing hard is going to result in the dough splitting apart. It's going to give you a lot of trouble. So just take your time here, roll, turn, roll, turn, and just let the dough kind of lead the way. It'll tell you when it's ready to flatten out. You can't really muscle your way there. Ooh, eight and a half by eight and a half. My edges are a little bit short, so let's just Go like that to get it squared up a little bit more. All right, so we've got our eight and a half inch by eight and a half inch square. Now what we need to do is trim up the edges. Claire said to just cut off the kind of uneven side, ideally chopping off as little as possible. You don't wanna waste a ton of this. The goal is to be able to cut two inch by two inch biscuits when we're done with this. So you're really looking to take off only the really scraggly bits on the outside. So you can see I didn't make a ton of scrap here. I don't like wasting food, so I like to keep it as tight as possible. Let's just double check, eight inches by eight inches. Oh God, that feels good. I love when things just work out exactly right. So you can't really re-roll the scraps. However, I did pack mine into just this little <laughs> makeshift sloppy biscuit um, just to avoid wasting the food. So now what we need to do is cut this into two inch by two inch squares. So I'm gonna make a tick mark at four, two, and six. Now again, using a sharp knife or your bench scraper, you're just gonna cut this at your tick marks. I'm going to cut it into quadrants first just so that I can make one kind of swift move through the dough. If you kind of stutter and are a little bit pensive as you're cutting, that will potentially impact the shape of your biscuit. So what you're looking for is for a clean cut down the side. That way you have the edges not really pinched together. That will allow them to rise up. So if you're moving really slowly and kind of dragging the knife, you're creating an opportunity for the biscuit to seal itself in, um, which will impede the rise during the bake process. I'm transferring these over to a cutting board or just a small plate. So the biscuits are basically ready to go. We're gonna pop them into the freezer for about 15 minutes just to let that butter firm up again since we've been working with it at room temp for a little bit. While we're freezing the biscuits, we're also going to turn the oven on and preheat that up to 425. So I'll see you when we're ready to bake. So the biscuits are nice and firmed up. The oven's preheated, so we're just about ready to bake. The last thing we need to do is brush the tops of these with some melted butter and sprinkle with a little cracked black pepper. We are ready to bake these. Um, you'll notice I only made four of these. The rest I'm gonna keep frozen. So the dough will stay good in the freezer for up to a month and you can bake them directly from frozen. Just add three to five minutes additional cook time. So I'm gonna pop these into the oven. We're gonna drop that temperature down from 425 to 375 and bake for 20 to 25 minutes until the bottoms of these are nice and brown and the tops are golden brown. My biscuits baked for a total of 22 minutes and this is the end result. So I've let these cool on the counter for about five minutes at this point. So they're warm to the touch, but not scorching hot. Um, you can see beautiful flaky layers. The bottom got nice and dark brown. The top is golden brown. So we hit all the visual cues that we were looking for. These look and smell so incredible. I'm just dying to dig in. So I am, I guess I'm going to peel apart the layers and see what that uh, looks like. So coming apart nicely. Oh my gosh. I... I'm in love with the texture here. It is super buttery, little pillows. You can see the steam is still coming off here. Um, so let's take a taste. Mmm. Oh my God. The texture here, it's so tender, but crispy at the same time. Not an easy feat to pull off. The miso gives it this really nice, kind of umami, rich, like earthy flavor, but there's also this little bit of, um, it has a little bit of a tang. Um, almost like cheese. If you, if you cook with um, or use nutritional yeast, you'll be familiar with that flavor where it's not cheese, but it kind of hits your tongue in the way that makes you think of cheese. This is fantastic. Honestly, 
So glad I made these. The texture here is so incredibly tender. These are more tender than the buttermilk biscuits that I made before, which I didn't think was possible, but Claire's managed to pull it off. So these are a delight. Even though we didn't add any salt to these, um, they are really well seasoned because the miso has quite a bit of salt in it just naturally. I think this would be really nice to sprinkle some flaky salt on the top. So after you brush with butter and add the pepper, throw some flaky salt on there as well. I think that additional crisp and additional like hit of concentrated salt flavor would complement this really well. Overall, huge fan of these biscuits. They're absolutely delicious. I really hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.